Today we will perform a non-linear static analysis using hypermesh and optistruct. We will focus on one of the three main types of non-linearity in FEA that is material non-linearity. The goal of this analysis is to define a non-linear material using external stress strain data in hypermesh. This non-linear material will be applied to a cylindrical component subjected to enforced displacement boundary conditions. The displacement, stress and plastic strain results will be visualized during post-processing. Let's get right into it. To get the material stress strain data and CAD file used in this video, feel free to contact me via email. My contact details are provided in the about section of this channel. The first step is to extract the stress strain data from the external CSV file into hypermesh to define a non-linear material. Let's take a look at how this is done. Once the geometry is imported in hypermesh, one component is visible in the model browser. To import the non-linear stress strain curve from an external file, let's open the utility tab from view menu. We will use the table create option. With radio button on import table, select type as table S1. In the selection box, we will open the directory where the curve data is saved. Set file type to CSV and load the required file. Enter a name for the curve and apply. As you can see, a new curve is created. Let's switch back to the model browser to review this curve. Open the curve editor to view the curve. As the required nonlinear stress strain data is imported correctly, we do not need to modify the curve manually. Close the curve editor. Now create a new material. Provide a name to it. We will enter the mechanical properties of aluminum in unit system Newton, millimeter, ton, second. To specify the nonlinear material behavior, we will use the MAT S1 option. In the TID field, select the previously created stress strain curve. Set the type as plastic. In the limit 1 field, we will enter the yield stress for the material. Note that this value must match the yield stress value observed in the stress strain curve. We will keep all other options as default. Now create a new property and provide a name to it. Select the aluminum material in material selection box. Let's use thickness value as 1 mm. Now we will assign this property to the part 1 component. The material will get assigned automatically. To mesh the shell component, we will use the general 2D mesh option from mesh ribbon. Select all the surfaces by dragging a box. Let's use a mesh size of 4 mm. Create the mesh. Once the mesh is created, we can exit the 2D mesh tool. For better visualization of the mesh, we will hide the geometry using the model browser. Switch to shaded elements view to view the mesh properly. Now we can start setting up the boundary conditions for this nonlinear static analysis. The cylindrical component will be fixed in space at one end and enforced displacement of 5 mm will be applied from the other end. To observe the effects of material nonlinearity, we will request displacement, stress, strain, as well as reaction force outputs from the solver. Let's start by creating RBE2 rigid elements, which will later be used 
to define the boundary conditions for the analysis. Create a new component to store RBE2 rigid elements. Now open the RBE2 tool from model ribbon. Let's switch the dependent node selector to edges. Select this semicircular edge. We will also select the other connected edge. Make sure that all degrees of freedom are selected. Create the RBE2 element. Similarly, we will also create another RBE2 element by selecting the two semicircular edges at the bottom of the cylindrical component. Rigid elements have been created at all required locations. Create a new load collector to store single point constraints. To create the SPCs, we will use the BCs tool from Analyze ribbon. Select the Constraints sub-option. Now select the center node of the lower rigid element. With all 6 degrees of freedom checked, create the constraint. Similarly, we will also constrain the center node of the upper rigid element. Exit the constraints panel. Let's create another load collector to define the enforced displacement boundary condition. Open the constraints panel again. Now select the center node of the upper rigid. We will deselect all degrees of freedom except DOF3, that is translation along Z axis. Let's apply an enforced displacement of 5 mm in negative Z direction. With load type as SPCD, create the constraint. Exit the constraints panel and close the BCs tool by clicking on it again. To couple the enforced displacement and SPC boundary conditions, create a new load step. Provide a name to it. Change the analysis type to nonlinear static. In the SPC field, select the SPC load collector. In the load field, assign the enforced displacement load collector. To define the nonlinear analysis run parameters, right click and create edit the NLparam card. Using the DT option, we will specify the initial time increment as 0.1. Close the card editor. To define the nonlinear analysis output settings, right click and create edit the NL out card. We will use the frequency option to output the results after every load increment during the analysis. To request specific results for post processing, we will use the output option. Let's output the displacement results for all nodal locations in H3D format. To check the change in reaction forces at SPC locations, we will request the SPC force results in H3D format. Now select the strain results to visualize the plastic strain in the model due to applied boundary conditions. Lastly, we will also output the stress results in H3D format. To plot the reaction force versus displacement graph during post processing, we must know the node ID of the center node of upper rigid. To show the node ID, we can use the numbers tool from tools panel. Now 
Note that the node ID is 803. The analysis setup is now complete. Let's export the finite element model as a solver deck using the file menu. Create a new folder to save the file. Make sure to use underscore in place of space while entering all file names to avoid any errors during the solver run. With export option set to all, complete the export. Let's copy the file path location where the FEM file is saved. We will submit the job to Optistruct Solver using the Compute Console application. In the input file selection box, select the FEM file exported during the previous step. To get the real time solver output during the run, we will apply the out command. Click on run to launch the Optistruct solver. This may take some time to solve. The analysis is complete and we can view the results using Hyperview. Close the solver window and compute console. Let's create a new page in the same Hyperworks session. The client will be automatically switched to Hyperview. We will open the H3D results file from the working directory. Select the H3D file and apply the results. Using the contour ribbon, apply the displacement results. We can play the animation using these buttons. To adjust the speed of the animation, we can use the frame rate slider. The deformation of the cylindrical component due to the action of externally applied loads is clearly visible. Similarly, we can also view the stress contours in different parts of the model. With averaging method as simple, apply the stress results. As you can see, the maximum stress value is above the specified yield limit. This means that there is plastic deformation happening in the model. The plastic strain results can be used to observe the locations at which plastic deformation is taking place. To plot a graph of reaction force versus displacement, let's split the graphic area into two parts. In the second window, change the client to hypergraph 2D. Now we will open the same H3D file again. In the X source, select the displacement result. Enter node number 803 and select the displacement magnitude. In the Y source, select the SPC force result. We will query the same node again. Select the magnitude of reaction force and plot the graph. The reaction force versus displacement graph is created. We can see that as the displacement value increases, the yield stress limit is exceeded and hence the resistance to deformation is reduced. The reaction force varies non-linearly with respect to the enforced displacement. We have successfully performed a non-linear analysis using Hypermesh and Optistruct. And this is how we can perform a nonlinear static analysis using Hypermesh and Optistruct. 
If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up. It helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.